With me now is Brian Hosford, the chair of the Reclaim Fingal Alliance. Brian, what's the point in turning up today? Uh, the point, Lachlan, is really to impress upon Greater Dublin Grain Drainage and Fingal County Council that uh, this issue hasn't gone away. Uh, the campaign is still Fingal wide. Uh, the communities who were originally involved are still involved. Uh, there are plenty of people here today who have been cut off the, the shortlist. Uh, they published a report recently which uh, reduced the number of potential sites from nine to three. But uh, that wasn't the, the point of, of our uh, campaign. The point was to say that we oppose the single monster treatment plant as a concept, and it makes no difference really where the intent of putting it in Fingal, uh, Fingal is still against it. Here we are, Swords, busy Saturday afternoon. And as you can see behind me, a large crowd, mostly comprised of people from Lusk, but representing areas from all over Fingal, are on their way to the council offices to make their views known to Fingal County Council. I better get out of the way before I'm trampled on. Well, I'm sure the people of Swords won't be too happy, but the centre of their town has been brought to a virtual standstill. But the people of Fingal will have their way. They'll have their chance to have their peace. Here inside in the council offices, the officials are letting in the protesters or the citizens in small groups in a very orderly manner and things are very calm and everybody's having an opportunity to talk to the officials. We're going to have a word shortly with somebody from Fingal County Council. I'm not sure who they'll have make available yet, but we'll find out. Gilbert, what's your re reaction to the size of the crowd here today? Well, I, I think um, it's, it's great to see so many people being aware of the project and taking an interest in the project and we genuinely are trying to consult with people. I know it's a difficult process for them but the project we're trying to promote is a necessary project for the Dublin region and we would prefer to get as much consultation done as early as possible before we establish what site we want to proceed with through the planning process. But a lot of people feel that 10,000 submissions have gone in already and they don't see any evidence of them making any difference to your plans. Can you point us to some evidence of how your plans have been adjusted to accommodate what people have been saying? Well, in fairness to people, I mean, uh, we, and we again appreciate that 10,000 submissions were put in and we appreciate the efforts people take. What we're looking for in particular is some information that we're not particularly aware of. We've, we've, done, we've, we've done detailed investigations on each of the individual sites to try and establish which is the better from an environmental and from an economic point of view is and we're looking for the public to give us some information that we may not be aware of it, so we'll make our decision correct, correctly. Now, in fairness, a lot of the information we got in the submissions, while it was all very welcome, would have been issues maybe we, we, were, we were aware of. We did do a detailed report on the consultation process which is available to the public and I would hope that the public would see that we've done a, a fair effort at trying to deal with all their concerns and any new information they gave us. So am, I, am I right in thinking therefore that it's not people's views or opinions you're looking for, it's facts that they're aware of that you may not be aware of such as underground resources or archaeology that may not have been discovered. Is that what you're looking for? Well, in, in, yeah, in particular we're looking for that type of information so that we can make the right decision. We are obviously interested in their views and opinions and it's important to talk and engage with people and explain to them what the project is about and hear what they feel about it. And that certainly is important. But in particular, in particular it's, it's facts that we're not aware of that we're particularly interested in as well. Now, Lusk has been selected for two of the proposed locations and many people in Lusk feel that this is an unfair burden. They've had Balele dump for decades, they had the spectre of the Nevis hanging over them, now happily lifted from them, but hanging over them for nearly a decade. They've had other undesirable developments in their area imposed on them. Do you think it's fair to single Lusk out again? Well, look, we're not deliberately trying to single Lusk out. Of course, you can understand where the, how the Lusk residents are feeling and you can understand why they feel that. From our point of view, this is such an important project. We have to do 
a, a proper site selection process. Remember, at the end of the day, whatever site is selected has to go forward for plan and consent to onboard Panala. Part of that process means we have to demonstrate that we arrived at the best possible site. In doing that, we can't exclude any areas. And I, I think I can understand why the lost people might feel that that's, might feel that's difficult to understand, but we can't exclude any areas. We have to look at all areas on their own merits. So that's what we're trying to do. But it is an open process. If people have information that think is significant, we want it. And just how many houses in, say, the Lusk area would benefit from having this plant right beside them? I, I don't think that's a fair comment. I mean, Lusk has its, uh, has its own treatment system being provided in Donabay at Port Rand. But remember, lots of people in Lusk work in Dublin. Lots of people in Lusk uh, produce vegetables which are sold to the Dublin market. So the, the, econ the economic benefit of a plant like this benefits everybody in the Dublin region because it's not in the interest of anybody within Dublin or the region if, for example, the region can't grow, if we can't take in foreign investment simply because we haven't got sewage capacity. I'd also say that people shouldn't forget that the waters around Dublin have improved significantly over the last 10 or 20 years because of these plants. So lost people will benefit. They'll benefit economically and they'll also benefit in terms of that the waters, uh, whether it's Rush or Donabate or the general Dublin Bay, will improve with these plants being installed. And that's been proven all over Ireland. So there are benefits to lust, albeit they may not see it. But what we're hearing from the people on the ground, and we've spoken to hundreds of them at this stage, is that there is nothing of benefit to anybody north of the airport in having this plant on their doorstep. It's for the benefit of other councils. No, well, that, that's not correct. While it may not be treating uh, the waste from the Lusk area, by the way, and I have to say the, the, the idea that it's simply for the benefit of the other councils is not correct. In the first phase, this will be taken in predominantly Fingal waste and then over the years we'll be taking in waste from maybe the Dublin area and some from other councils. But Lusk people live in or around the Dublin region this project is essential for the Dublin region, for the environmental and economic improvement of the Dublin region, and they will benefit from that, and there's no doubt about that. When you say it's taking in Fingal waste, what parts of Fingal? It's taken in uh, uh, Blanchestown, all the way over to, uh, the, the, all the, way over to the, um, the, the, what we call the North Fringe areas, Clonshaw. It's taken in the, the northern urban fringe of the Fingal area. And remember, I mean, people in Lusk may say, well, that's nothing to do with us, but it, but it is. Uh, we have a substantial employment base over in Blanchestown, substantial uh, high-profile international companies over in Blanchestown. People in Lusk benefit from the employment opportunities there. They benefit from the rates that are generated there, which we spend throughout the county. So, I mean, what we, what in the council, we're not going to accept that there's one part of the council in isolation to the rest. We have to look at the council as a whole and the region as a whole. But then it would make more sense if, if areas like Balbrig and Skerries, Lusk and so on we're getting the benefit of this plant directly. Their, their, their sewage won't be processed in the area. Can, can you understand how people in these areas are feeling threatened and they don't feel they're being well served by this plan at all? Well, I, of course I can understand that. But first of all, I think I have to say that the what is perceived as the environmental disbenefits of, of, of a plant like this, I think are exaggerated to agree. Now, people may not accept that, and I think people need to have an open mind. Like, this, this, is, this technology is not rocket science. It has been in place. It has been placed in around the Dublin region for quite a number of years, and certainly there's been mistakes, but we've, we've learned from them. But a plant like this is critical to the environmental and economic improvement to the Dublin region, and that will benefit Lusk and the North Dublin area. How many people in the North County area actually are employed in Dublin? How many of them send their kids to college in Dublin? How many of them are involved in agriculture which feeds into the Dublin market, which sells their produce into the Dublin market? It's not in their interest that Dublin becomes stagnant economically. So just, just move, moving forward a bit, what's the next stage in this process? Well, today is, today is the final day from, from the, the public information days. There's still a little period to run in the, in, in the date for receipt of submissions uh, uh, from the public in relation to this phase. What we have at this stage, we have three, we've three sites shortlisted. We now intend to look at those sites in a lot more detail, taking on board anything that comes out from the public point of view, but also looking at um, the in detail at the archaeology in these sites, looking, for example, in detail at the pipelines, looking in, in detail at the economic cost of those pipelines, pipelines and bring forward a set of measures where we can we can weigh the relative merits of each site against one another and come up with the best possible site. All of these sites at face value would seem to be suitable for a wastewater treatment plant. What we're trying to do is come up with the best site of them all. 
It, one of the points that some of the commentators have made is that it seems crazy to build such a long pipeline going from effectively Blanchardstown out to Loch Shinney and beyond out to the sea. Yeah. Would it not be more obvious to have a shorter pipeline and if we do have to have a uh, facility such as this wouldn't the Clonshock site be the most likely in that situation? Yeah well it would be wrong of me at this stage to say that any site sure, I <laughs> should be <laughs> yeah. is, is more preferential to the others. Look that will be examined in detail in terms of the cost of not only constructing the pipeline but the cost of operating the plant and obviously if there is a significant difference that will be a critical factor but that's too far too early to say. We still have for example need to do geological testing on the route of the pipelines, we need to establish exactly where they are, we need to establish how far out the outfalls are and we need to cost that. So while people may have that assumption that one is longer than the other and thereby there may be more capital cost, I think it's far too early to say that. Any, any of our figures or any um, of the data on which we make assumptions will be available to people ultimately and they'll be able to see how we arrive at our conclusions. But it's too early at this stage to say one site's more preferential. Okay. So, so, so finally, when do you think you'll have, we'll be in a position to announce the, the preferred site? We, we are hoping to, and again, uh, and I'd qualified this by saying the last period, the last phase of this, we'd hoped to announce the shortlist of three sites earlier, but because of the huge public interest in it, obviously, it took us a month or two extra to process that information. But we would hope to, by the end of the year, start of next year the latest, and I think it's important that we try and arrive at our decision, not only just accurately, but as soon as possible in terms of setting people's mind at rest as to where the actual preferred site is. It's hard to know what to say when you see so many people. I wonder if Fingal County Council will listen. We're outside their offices and there's still a large crowd here, even though the time for the consultation should have finished by now. For FCTV, I'm Lorcan O'Toole.